Hello, welcome to Rackin Lab 1020, how to build a multi-cloud cluster using predefined Terraform. The objective for this is to use cluster pipelines to build a dynamic set of machines via Terraform plans without actually building any plans. You're going to use the ones built into Digital Rebar. And the ROI for this is that you can use multi-cloud self-service to allow your teams to share and reuse managed Terraform plans. It takes about 10 minutes and you'll learn a lot about how to use Digital Rebar in the process. We're starting from an installed digital rebar. We recommend that you look at Lab 1010 to review and get familiar with how to build clusters and how to operate them to create machines. You can see in this case, I've already run the bootstrapper and we're gonna go through the resource broker clusters and machines process as part of this lab. I've created the one machine here. This is my bootstrapper machine. And you'll notice its name matches the endpoint ID for the system. Step one, from the resource brokers page, we're going to go ahead and add a new resource broker. We're going to select the appropriate cloud. In this case, I'm going to use the AWS cloud in this example, and I'm going to give it a unique name. Uh, we're going to call it the lab 1020 broker. We can leave uh, these steps here, but I do need to be able to put in my secret key. And my access key. I can choose additional things like the region, instance type, AMI, security groups, firewall ports, and even my uh, RSA user key. This one is an important one to change for AWS so that we can log into the machine using our EC2 user account. These other ones, uh, may have vary by cloud depending on which resource you're picking, and they might have interdependencies. For example, AWS AMIs are by region, so you need to be able to pick them. And instance types, you need to know what they are. Some clouds have them predefined, and we're able to use those, and other ones, we have to define them here. Once again, we want to pick an icon, make things interesting, and go ahead and hit Save. The resource broker stores the credentials in a secure location. And I'm going to go ahead and watch that resource broker get set up. We are not actually connecting to Amazon at this time. We are literally building the broker that will connect. And so as part of troubleshooting, we don't know if we've entered our credentials correctly yet or not. It will wait until the next step when we start exercising the broker and making requests. But you can see here that we've added this new broker. It is now in work order mode, meaning we can send ad hoc requests to it, which is necessary uh, for a cluster to use it. One of the things that we recommend in these brokers if you, is to, during training time, to go ahead and add the parameter to unlock the object, add the parameter for the Terraform debug plan operation. This will allow us to store the Terraform plan. We have to add the parameter and set it to true. Go ahead and lock the object again now that we've done that. Every time we run this broker now, the Terraform, the raw plan that's used to generate the request will be stored with the cluster. That is not secure. It has uh, sensitive information in it, but it is very handy while you're in a test debug or training mode like we are now. Step two, from the clusters view, we're going to go ahead and add a cluster. We're going to call it Lab 1020. And we are going to choose our new resource broker. Choose the number of machines that we want. If we're just doing this for the first time, one might be simple enough. Two or three is a good, is a good start. We're going to leave these additional options uh, open. Those are discussed in later labs. Once again, setting our icon to something distinctive. I'm going to go ahead and hit save. If we watch our activity view here, you'll notice we're running through the pipeline until we get to cluster provision. Cluster provision is a good opportunity to jump over to the resource broker. You can see our lab broker here is doing work. There's a task that's defined. And if I jump into the activity view, I can actually see what's going on here. Expanding, I can see that it's applying Terraform. And actually get a chance to watch and see the Terraform plan being built as we go. So this Terraform plan is running 
being run by the digital rebar server in the Terraform context. Uh, in this case, it's actually pulling in the credentials and information that we passed to build that complete system. Because this is the first time we ran it, it's actually initializing the uh, AWS uh, components, pulling them down to be used locally, and then will be reused in subsequent runs. Let's see how our Terraform is doing. Looks like we have a successful run. These uh, plans are battle-hardened and should run without any trouble as long as you got your credentials correct, and that looks good. And you'll notice it catches a whole bunch of information. So as these machines are being provisioned in Amazon, now we can go over and look at the machines view. I asked for two machines. This is Lab 0 and Lab 1. They're being created in Amazon uh, right now. And as soon as they are online, they will go through and, be, and automatically join back into Digital Rebar and begin the universal start uh, process. So here, what we've been able to do is use the cluster to call a resource broker they called Terraform for us that automatically created machines that had a predefined workflow assigned and here you can see they're coming online and now it's going through that process and running the pipeline that was assigned to that machine. All of this was defined in advance and can be varied. We have labs showing you how to vary and change the initial pipeline for machines. But that system coming online is now doing all the work to prepare and initialize the system. In this case, uh, bringing the Linux package updates that are necessary online. That's defined as part of the standard pipeline. If we jump back, we can see both of these systems are now coming through the process, and the cluster is in the middle of building. It's waiting for all of the systems to complete. We can also check the work orders view and see this work in process right here. Oops, it's already completed that work, um, where we did the Terraform uh, plan. If we jump back to the cluster and see this cluster, we have saved the Terraform state file here in the cluster. So each cluster knows its state. If we go and add machines or remove machines from the cluster and then reapply the, the platform, which I'll do in a moment, uh, you'll see it. You can also see that... Um, our Terraform debugging information right here shows you exactly what was what was built. And if we look at the whole plan, you can see even down to uh, the AWS instance for the DRP machines that got set up. Looks like we're about to complete those machines have built. The cluster has finished building, completed, and switched into workflow mode. Before we move off, we should note that the machines themselves have an inventory cost calculated, and the cluster's inventory cost is calculated based on summing the inventory cost of the machines. The same information is available in the overview page where you can see the cost of the clusters, and we've actually started tracking the daily cost of running this cluster, both for the machines and the total for the cluster. Step four. Now let's resize this cluster. If we wanted to go from one, two, two machines down to one, and have the system take advantage of that, all we have to do is apply the universal application blueprint. Remember, this system is now in work order mode, and we don't have to run the whole workflow. We can just apply a blueprint to it. In this case, this blueprint will just reprovision the system. If we check activity, we can see that cluster provision. We can actually drill down and watch what's going on here. What we'll see is that it's calling back to the resource broker. It's always our intermediary for that type of resource information. And if we look here, we'll be able to see the activity of it once again calling Terraform. So here is the Terraform apply. And you can imagine, since we've gone from two resources to one, those machines are gonna to be torn down and taken out of the system. They would be, they're being deleted from Amazon. That one machine is being deleted from Amazon right now, and it's already been removed from Digital Rebar. And that it allows us to change the size of the cluster. You can have named roles for the cluster, many machines for the cluster. There's a lot of ways to have very concrete information. Very simple to go in and change clusters, even set it to zero and have the cluster remain, but all but have no resources. Step five. From the clusters view, we want to clean this cluster up and remove all of its resources. To do that, we need to switch it back into workflow mode and then choose to delete it. When we say delete, 
is going to run the deprovisioning operation, which is calling back to the resource broker with an empty cluster, or a Terraform destroy in this specific case. The resource broker is doing that work, and then we can see its operations here actually calling a Terraform destroy to remove the system. At this point, we've been able to clean up all of our systems and the cluster itself will be deleted. This is an incredibly powerful way to manage your system. Not only can you create a cluster and have it build the machines and manage the machines for you, you can actually do cleanup processes. We have a lab in the 2000s that actually shows you how to build uh, a timer to remove all of your development clusters every evening automatically to make sure you don't have a resource leak. Now that the cluster is gone, I do want to show you one additional step that you can take as part of using the CLI. It's entirely possible and recommended to actually build the resource brokers using CLI operations so that you can bring in your cloud infrastructure uh, systems yourself. Here, what you'll see, I've, I've actually built my secret keys simply by inspecting my credential, my AWS credentials. I haven't I've hid output here, and so now I can actually go back, check my resource brokers, and see that I now have an AWS broker. And the parameters have been set for my, my keys. Now, once again, these are stored and secure uh, it's securely in the system or potentially by vault if I've attached vault or another uh, secret store to digital rebar. And, and that means that the broker now has the information to be able to do the work I needed. And I could simply provision a new cluster using that broker if I wanted, choosing AWS broker here. Now, one of the nice things about this type of approach is that you can build brokers that all work against AWS but have different credentials, different teams, different defaults built into them, and that gives you a tremendous amount of power. Using the CLI to create them means that you can very quickly build new sites, upload your credentials without having to do any clicking. That concludes all of the lessons for Lab 1020. I hope you will take a look at Lab 1030 where we use this same approach but in a cron job to actually detect drift in Terraform.